Hi, everybody. This is Steve Jones. I'm with McGraw Hill Construction. And today we're going to be talking about uh, BIM for use outside of the vertical environment. Um, I was in the architecture world for almost 20 years with a firm called Burt Hill, uh, now part of Stantec. And then I did three years in the technology space with Primavera. Uh, now I've been 11 years with McGraw Hill Construction. And I am our subject matter expert in the advancing uh, Phenomena really around uh, virtual design and construction. It's a very exciting time to be in the industry. So please reach out to me uh, at any time. You'll see my email here. I'm always interested in talking to people who are doing interesting things in the industry. So my part of McGraw Hill Construction is one of six divisions within the overall six billion dollar corporation at McGraw Hill, and all of us are focused on being the best of class in terms of providing business information and analytics to our customers. Hopefully you know some of our leading brands, ENR, Dodge, Suites, and Architectural Record. I've been personally involved now in developing our research reports, which are published under the name of the Smart Market Report series. These are all free, and you'll see there the URL you can go to, and there's 50 or 60 of these up there now that we've done. They're all sponsored by uh, groups of companies that believe in the research. They sponsor us to do these, and they cover all kinds of interesting topics. I've been most specifically involved in the ones around building information modeling and technologies. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk a little bit today. I'll share with you some of the findings we did on one about 18 months ago, just about infrastructure. We've done most of our work up to that point in studying the use in vertical construction. Uh, but the infrastructure space was really growing in terms of its use of BIM. And again, this is a free report. I'll just give you a couple of the highlights of it. Um, it was made possible by Autodesk and the ASCE. So when we did this uh, study of BIM users, it turned out that about half of them were using BIM for infrastructure projects, which is actually far more than we thought there'd be. It's pretty exciting. Uh, most of them are actually creating models and then using them for analysis and simulation and things. And I'll show you some examples of that uh, in a few minutes here. Now, in terms of comparing where the adoption curve and the implementation level are for infrastructure as opposed to vertical construction. It's probably maybe two to three years behind. Um, as you can see here, when you look at the folks who've been uh, doing things for five or more years, uh, only 23% of them were doing that with their infrastructure projects versus almost half of the group had been doing uh, buildings projects for that long. And we track something called implementation, which means once you've adopted, once you've begun to use, you know, how much of your portfolio are you actually going to be doing it with? And we look at those who are doing more than half of their work in BIM as being those that are really heavily committed. So we ask folks to look back two years and then tell us what they were doing at that time and then look two years in the future. And you can see it's really growing very quickly. Once people start using it for infrastructure, they want to do more and more and more of their projects uh, in it. Very exciting, very rapid growth in this area. And also we asked them about what kinds of projects they're doing. And again, we said, you know, look back two years and then tell us what you're doing now and then tell us what you're going to be doing in the future, how many of you are doing more than half of these kinds of projects, and all of them, across the board, all these infrastructure project types are growing very rapidly in terms of how many of them are being done in BIM. Interestingly, these smaller firms were the ones who were forecasting the fastest growth, and that, we believe, has a lot to do with the fact that perhaps they're doing smaller projects, quicker turnover, as opposed to trying to bring in a new technology and new processes in the middle of a, of a long project, uh, they're able to take advantage of the shorter project cycle and actually begin to bring this into their project stream uh, more quickly. So we're seeing uh, exciting growth among that smaller firm market. In terms of the benefits, uh, in all of our uh, BIM research, we are always looking at the business benefits. That's why we call these the business value of BIM, because we believe that's the thing that you need to study in terms of seeing which things are going to actually get traction and become standard ways of doing business in our industry. Uh, interestingly, you'll see here that uh, firms, uh, the, you know, the number one business benefit here was marketing new business. Um, very strong in terms of once you've got this capability, uh, you can really use it to your advantage uh, to win clients over. I'll give you a great example of that. This is uh, a firm down in Mexico City, the biggest firm actually in Mexico, ICA, uh, construction company. They were chasing this design build project for a light rail system with nine stops in the city of Monterey. And, you know, you've all seen things like this before. 
but you probably haven't seen things like this before. This is helicopter video where they stitched in, and I would have to say this is about as seamless as I've ever seen. They stitched in an animated uh, Revit model. Uh, needless to say, when they walked in with their presentation, uh, they walked out with a job. Uh, this is extremely, extremely uh, powerful. In terms of the uh, owner's view, all their uh, benefits are based specifically on project-oriented outcomes. Uh, reducing rework, fewer claims in litigation, reduction in errors. Uh, but again, this is what uh, people who have the STEM capability can take this information and take it to their owners and say, look, this is happening everywhere, and this is what your peers are saying about the benefits they're receiving when BIM gets used in their projects. You know, so this is, again, very confirming in terms of the power of using BIM outside of buildings. In terms of the project-oriented benefits, interestingly, uh, spatial coordination is, is as strong in the infrastructure world as it is in vertical. Uh, in vertical construction, visualization and spatial coordination are the two leading benefits we find in all the studies we do all over the world. And again, in terms of doing things with uh, coordinating a lot of existing systems, underground systems, things of that nature, it's really important to be able to model this work and move it forward. And also, you'll see here greater client engagement, two very important benefits here. And I'll show you an example here of a project that Parsons Brinkerhoff is doing in Seattle, where they were doing an underground tunnel that had to go for four and a half miles here in the oldest part of Seattle, right along the waterfront, to replace a two-story viaduct, which was at risk of coming down from uh, um, earthquake. So you can imagine the length of time it would normally take to bring people through on a, a process like this with all the community groups using typical drawings and things of that nature. Now, but they were actually able to capture all the information about all the underground foundations, all the underground utilities in this uh, along the entire run, and model all that and actually take the entire, all the community groups right through this so they could clearly understand how they were going to build this and that it would be able to be done without conflict of any of the special coordination with any of the existing utilities in the, in the oldest and most dense part of the city, and actually show them the uh, digging machine itself that was going to be operating down underneath that space. Incredibly powerful. They believe they were able to move through all these approvals about half the time that it might normally have taken because they're able to use these tools. They also did uh, an entire Revit model of the city of Seattle, and so they were able to take everyone through a complete fly-through of the completed uh, tunnel and show them all the safety uh, features and things of that nature. So it was incredibly compelling once they had modeled all this to be able to get it through, get client engagement, and get it through that approval process. I'll show you another good example of uh, really effective engagement with existing conditions and demonstrating very clearly not only how you're going to build something but what it would look like. This was the site. Right, that the client had, and so Hatchmont McDonald, in this case, was able to take them through this process of exactly how they would excavate and how they would create this water treatment facility. And then for the engineering people uh, involved in it, they could show exactly how all the equipment would be engaged. For the construction people, they could show exactly how everything would be built in what sequence. They could show all the rebar and all the pours that were happening. Uh, they could really engage everybody who needed to understand how things were going to get done. You see the rebar here and all the concrete pours. And then ultimately be able to take people through in great high fidelity detail exactly what this thing is going to be like when it's completed. And then how it would be, uh, the, the site would be filled again and replicated back to the original site with just this amount of landscaping and that amount of building. Very, very powerful client engagement. But again, because it was able to be modeled in advance. So I encourage you to uh, take a look at this study. Again, it's free on our site. I think uh, Microsoft is going to have it available on their site as well. Uh, there's a number of different case studies, including one on the Panama Canal, which is an amazing project, um, and a number of thought leader perspectives.